And hello again everyone, welcome back. This is Dennis, this is Ten Staff of a Paleo Gamer, and we are playing Amazon. We have just arrived at the native village, the one that Yekamani came from, and the one where um, Valenbois learned about the um, white birds. In fact, since we're here, we're going to take the egg with us. Now, there's a pathway leading off to the right as we get off of the um, but we can't do much about it. Instead, there's also a lever here that has a snake wrapped around it. Don't touch that. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to go off to the left, and we are going to go up into the village itself. This is the Amazonian <laughs> village, Yukamani's home. And did you just hear a monkey, or was that just me? And, um, yeah. You might recognize that as um, one of the pictures in the journal. Um, yeah, the village has apparently seen better days. Now, we're going to go in here because this has a piece of information on it that's going to be useful to us. This is a template, or not a template, a drawing that shows us what happens. Basically, it says we have to take a hang glider type thing into a mountain. And we have to take the egg there. Now, you notice that the egg has a small black spot in it, and here's a great white bird with a small black bird inside of it. Now, if you read the journal, what it actually tells us is that, and I'm not going to flip through it because this is the very end of the journal, it tells us that if the egg is not properly prepared, then the white birds do not hatch from the egg. Instead, a, instead a short-lived black bird hatches from it. But there is a ceremony you go through that removes the black spot from inside of the egg and allows the white birds to emerge. It was actually this ceremony that um, Valenbois saw that led him to realize that the white birds existed at all. This is how he became aware of them. He saw the ceremony. Now there's all these weird machines and that sort of thing in here. But none of them are working. We don't know quite what they're for, except they have something to do with the birds. And for now... Okay. For now, we're just going to go out this way. We're going this way. There's another machine. I'm not going to bother exploring yet. Um, instead, we're going to go out <laughs> this way. Again, is that a monkey or is that someone laughing? I really can't tell. We're going to go out this way, and we're going to head off to the right. Now, that's definitely a monkey. We go through this cave, and climb up this ladder. Alright. This is the other side of all that network of um, docks and everything we saw where we stopped the um, hydro flood. All we have to do is turn this wheel. This lets the water flow through a bunch of mechanisms, and all those things we saw back in the village are water-powered. This is going to power them up. Now, one of the things we need to do here, there's a red bug on the ground right here. We need to pick that red bug up. Leave the tunnel. Different animal. There's some white flowers growing here. See those? We need to pick those up. And we need to go all the way to the end where there is this palm tree with a coconut in it. If I shake that, one of the coconuts falls out. I'll pick it up. Alright. Now we're ready to go back into the village. Now, when I come through the door, there's some things right here in front of us. The first one is this drawing, which is obviously one of Valenbois' drawings, because if you recognize it, it looks like the same style as the ones we saw back in the lighthouse. And this thing has apparently been sitting here for 60 years? But it shows 
a elevator type device, some sort of lift, and a counterweight thing towing a boat along. That's going to come in handy in a minute. We also have another disc, which has again obviously been here since the 1930s. And you may notice there is a person over here. Who is this woman and where did she come from? She was not here before. Let's talk to her. Ovu? Okay, Ovu. And there's a skeleton up there. I'm sure there's not anything mysterious going on here at all. She asked for Ovu. Ovu is egg. So let's give her the egg. Ah, Ovu. Yes, Ovu. Ovu. Okay, she asked for three things, and I'm not going to try to repeat them. What she wants is the beetle, the coconut, and the flower, but they need to be prepared first. Notice that bird is now flying. That's because we have activated the um, correct... Um, when we turn that valve up there, all the machines are now working. So we need to now use these machines. The first machine we're going to use is this one. Notice there's a camera here bashing things and a hopper here to put something in. We're going to put the coconut in that. The coconut will roll down and get smashed by that hammer, which causes a stream of... gives us some coconut milk. We're going to collect that. Then we're going to go down to the next machine, which is the one that had the skeleton in front of it. This machine has these little scoops here. We're going to take the flower and put it in there. What that does is that will produce some shredded flour down here, and we will pick that up. Now we need to go back to where the woman is waiting for us. She wants three things, all three of these things, so let's give them to her. Chico. Yes. Manga. And... Loku. And now that we've done all three, she will perform a ceremony on the egg, the one we saw on the drawing there. She puts a funnel in, black smoke no. in, White smoke. Look, the egg has elected a new pope. Very good. All right. We now have the egg again, and the woman has disappeared. Hmm. Intriguing. All right. We now get to go back to the boat. But first, we need to do a couple of things. The first thing we need to do is we need to activate that last mechanism. Remember the snake that was there? Well, now that we've talked to the woman, we don't have to worry about the snake. I go to activate the lever. Hear that flute? Yes, she's apparently calling the snake somehow with that flute. And I don't know where she's going with it, but she's taking the snake away. You, know, you only had to move it like five feet. I didn't need you to take it all the way over there, but okay, whatever. Now I can pull the lever which opened that gate. Let's get back on the hydrofloat, put the egg back in its place, and put the last disc into place. Alright, the only thing we can do now is go into boat mode. That's the only mode left to us. We still have no fuel, the details and everything else are good, but we're now in boat mode. Now all we can do is drift forward at this point. We have no fuel. And notice that my screen in front of me has suddenly turned into French. It's mode arc. 
the test points, you know, it's, I don't know. It's one thing they didn't localize. Everything else up until now has always been localized, but this bet looks fine. And I drift forward to this position. Right outside there is a lever. I pull it. There's the engines even vanish from the back of the... Uh, Going up that waterfall. This is a lift to get me over the waterfall. And up here, I go slide down. The hill. Now you may recognize this as having from that um Dallin drawing we saw earlier. Okay, see, even the engine is going from the back. There is literally nothing left of the hydrofoil except for this little bit. Let's pull this lever and get on our way again. Riding on it, Disney World or Six Flags. That's not just like a real thing. Heading deeper into the swamps, the jungles of the Amazon, and uh, there's the things blocked by a tree up there. And whoops, Blump. No. The Hydra floats destroyed! <sighs> well, okay, the egg is safe. Alright, obviously we were supposed to continue deeper into the swamp, but things have... we finally hit something that's broken down in the past 60 years, so we're gonna have to figure out how to get there on our own. We're gonna start by going to this little cabin. The only thing we can pick up here is this... bag. It looks like it's designed to be worn around your neck or something, but... We'll need that in a minute. Now, from what it looks, from looking at the various things, it looks like we were supposed to be going this way. So we're just going to go this way into the swamp. And we're going to find a frog. And find a bird or something it sounded like. Frog again. We're just going to keep going through the swamp here. There's more or less one direction we can go. And there's a butterfly, which... And we come to this, which looks like something was here once upon a time anyway. And there's also a pole with some kind of loudspeaker on the top. It has these three little buttons on the bottom. What we need to do is we need to take the bag and press it against those buttons. It's the one that works is the one on the bottom. Let's up this foghorn like noise and something in the jungle responds to us. Somewhere. Yeah, these things that look like aquatic giraffes. And that one in the middle is wearing a saddle. Apparently it's been waiting for 60 years for this. Yeah, that makes sense to me too. Hi guys. Okay, well, let's see where you want to take me. I guess it would have been hard to take the hydrofloat through this swamp, although it would have probably been towed to this point. I have to wonder, was Valenbaugh planning for the hydrofloat to keep falling apart and keep losing pieces of itself all along the way? Or did he intend to get here with the hydrofloat intact? I mean, who knows? I mean, I don't. Okay, this is apparently where I'm supposed to be. There's something up here. It's a rope bridge leading off from nowhere. Well, let's see where this takes us. Sudden dramatic change in music. I'm sure that meant something. Actually, we're in Chapter 7 now. Alright. Hmm, there's a temple up here. I'm a long ways above the swamp. I wonder how long it took me to get here. How far does that rope bridge go, anyway? Alright. Let's go in here and see what's... There's someone in here. 
who wants to bet? Yeah, it's him. Uh, power. <laughs> no power. Do you really know what power is? No, of course not. Few people do. Women who are so worn out and tired they no longer even care to fake. Yet they tremble with fear in your arms. Because power is always fear. The fear of the one that possesses it, who risks losing it, and who then fears the one who is the victim of it, like a dog being beaten, and then growing old. <laughs> you have come instead of Valenbois, haven't you? Oh, the poor fool. The white bird and all that. <laughs> The enemy of power, my friend, is not liberty, not democracy. And all that miserable nonsense, the enemy of power is the dream. The dream! But you'll never understand that. I mean a real dream, not those common, mind-dulling fairy tales that anesthetize people while you kick them under your heel. I have always been wary of those white birds. All that mythology. I wanted Amazon to be a great modern nation, a country that believed in progress, that believed in science and technology. But these confounded Amazonians revel in that sappy romantic legend, that legend of white birds. I wanted to make the people, I wanted them to be happy, despite their wishes. I won't let you go any further. Well, that was a convenient villain monologue and sudden heart attack. Yeah. Obviously that's Antonio Alvarez, that was the dictator of Amazon, and the last member of the 1930s expedition has now died. We are really bad luck for these people, aren't we? Just showing up long enough to hear their last words? And I can't take the gun. All I can take is his medals. But Okay, fine. How did he get here? And why is he here without a guard or anything? I mean, what did he... How did he get here? That's all I want to know. Alright. The only other thing we can do in this room is spin this lever. That is not a door. It looks like a vault door of some kind. It isn't. But if you hear, something is happening elsewhere. What actually happened is these steps have rearranged themselves. And we have another door leading inside. And, oh look, there's a glider. If you remember that painting or tapestry or whatever that was back in the native village, they had a picture of the glider in it. That has something to do with the ceremony for the birds. So let's get in it and head off and we have a failure to launch. Okay. Well, that could have done better. What's actually going on is we don't have enough airflow through here to launch. Now, the airflow is controlled with this panel, but we can't do anything with it yet because we need something to put in there. So, where that comes from is over here. See this furnace of some kind. I guess that's... Let's get that thing going all these years. Is that lava in there? Who knows? At this point, I'm willing to accept almost anything, because it would have been better if we had flown the hydro float up here, you know. I'm going to take the metals, which I was somehow prescient enough to bring with me. Put them in there. And the furnace will melt the metals down. I love how the metals were gold and that this is silvery. Obviously they were just gold plated. The guy didn't even have enough. Didn't even have real metals. Eh. That forms this key which goes in here. Now we can just turn this and we just keep turning. And see that? It goes all the way around. Now as you can hear the wind has picked up quite a bit in here. Hopefully that's enough wind to get us to where we need to go. Let's find out. And we're heading straight for a volcano. Now, these weird blackbirds are here. And let's not land in the lava pit, shall we? Let's go to the rock. Okay, that's good. That's... Ouch! 
Wow. That could have gone better, I presume. All right. We're now... Oh, the glider's broken. Okay, I have one question. How am I planning on getting out of here? I have no glider. I have no aquatic giraffe. I have no hydrofloat. Why the hell am I here, and how do I get back? I can go out there, but there's nothing to do out there yet. Let's walk around this lava pit, and I should really be unhappy walking up this, but at this point, I guess our guy doesn't care. I guess our the journalist we're running here. If you notice, there's a small cave over there. It's a little hard to see, but... Yeah, it's just, we're here inside Mount Doom, obviously. There's a platform up here. Let's take the egg, that's all that's left, and put it on the platform. And I have no idea what that did, but it was obviously important in some way. And notice I'm not bringing just the egg, I'm bringing the entire cradle the egg was sitting in. I don't know how I've been carrying that. This thing's about the size of an ostrich egg, apparently, which is a couple of feet across. Where am I carrying this thing? Alright. Over here is the last thing I need, is this little object there. That's what it looks like. It's a shape like a bird with a sharp point on the end. Now I just make my way back. There's the... Is that it? And we go out here. We're out here over the volcano. Take the egg and put it at the very edge of the rim. And then puncture the egg with the needle. Because obviously it can't survive on its own. And you watch what happens. never stop flying. They are born, they mate, and they die in the hot rising fumes of the volcanoes. Their giant wings continue growing throughout their lives. And some people even claim that long after their death, their lifeless bodies glide on tirelessly. These are but stories, people say. Stories that feed the dreams of the children who live in the Amazon. And all I have to ask is, how do I get home now? Alright. Well, obviously that is the end of the Amazon. We have made it all the way through it. We have stranded a journalist somewhere in the culture of a volcano. But apparently nobody cares about him. But at least the white birds are back. And, like I said, that is it. Um, we're going to sit here and let the credits run, just to make sure everyone has credit where they're due. Uh, we'll be playing another adventure game next time. I'm not sure what I'm going to be playing next. I may go through the Nwasa Calls um, games, which means we'll be playing Siberia next, or I may switch to something else for a while. Who knows? Anyway, until next time, I'll let you sit here and read the credits. And when we meet again, this is Dennis, this is Tan Staff of the Paleo Gamer, and I will see you later. In the meantime, game on.